Joining us now to discuss the week in news are reporter in our reporter rewind, our freelance journalist Rupa Michelinini, and New York Amsterdam news reporter Herb Jones. And no offense, Herb, but I love saying Rupa Michelinini. <laughs> <laughs> Mainly because I can say it. <laughs> Welcome to both of you. So great to have you. Okay, so we're going to talk about a few things. So let's get going. Let's start with the spectacular collapse of the I-5 bridge in Washington State, which is just indicative of what seems to be a crumbling in infrastructure here in the U U.S. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you heard about the collapse, what were your first thoughts, Rupa? Not shocking. Remember, six years ago we had Minneapolis. I mean, this is happening. This this is something we're we're going to have to worry about for the future. And frankly, with the austerity <laughs> situation going <laughs> Except on, we call it sequestr sequestration. Yeah, yeah. sequestration. I call it austerity, right? <laughs> <laughs> Both. Um, but when you've got that, you've got uh, you know major budgetary constraints, which are going to cause. Uh, you know, further I issues for the future because we don't have a budget to fix the right. situation. Exactly. What, what happens though, by the way, that's her Boyd, not Jones. What did I say? <laughs> I don't know. Did I say Jones? Jones? <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> that's all right. I'm going to blame the person who's really making this mistake <laughs> exactly. if it happens one more time. Well, Dick. okay. That's the only mistake we're going to make. <laughs> okay. the, the, the thing about infrastructure, it's, it's kind of like a double-edged sword, but it can be solved because if you start putting America back to work, and of course, Obama has kind of fainted at that on several occasions. You'll solve a number of the infrastructure problems we have in this country. Put America back to work in the same way that FDR did it during the Great Depression. And that relieved the whole economic situation. At the same time, it rebuilt the whole nation in terms of bridges, parks, to say nothing of the whole transportation system, the highway system. And I think uh, the domination he made of Anthony Fox, you know, who was the former mayor of Charlotte, North Carolina, I think is a step in the right direction. Yeah, and of course, you know, you stir the old political pot when you say that, putting America back to work with those public works programs, because that's not popular with everyone, especially with conservatives. But here's mm -hmm the deal. You know, our infrastructure is not only an issue of safety for our citizens, but it does have to do with commerce. I mean, exactly. how much of our supplies and our goods go over these roads? And fortunately, though, it's not a sexy topic. No, it's mm -hmm. not. And we're talking about the majority of our goods and services are, are actually goods, I should say, not right. services, <laughs> um, are transported by these huge trucks. And so these are heavy heavy, you know, uh, trans transportation devices, obviously, that require uh, um, solid, solid infrastructure. Exactly. Solid, safe roads. And here, I'm going to push you a little bit on, on, on your idea of putting America back, work, sure. back to work. To, in order to do that, that takes money, Herb Boyd. Where's yes. that money coming from? <laughs> well, it does take money, but it also means that, you know, how do you begin to level off things in terms of the foreign spending. Uh, we still got a war going on in Afghanistan, some 60,000 troops over there. How do you begin to kind of trade off between the money you could rescue from putting, keeping these troops, you know, overseas to bring them home, to say nothing about the general defense spending that goes on in this country. Mm -hmm. It's always a question. I mean, Dr. King reminded us that during the whole Vietnam situation, you're spending so much money on the war abroad that begins to kind of really impact the uh, economy at home, mm -hmm. the money that could be spent on various social programs and infrastructure. Absolutely. I just come back from Oklahoma. You know, I was out there where in, in Moore, Oklahoma, where the tornado, that's Tornado Alley. And even as I return, we see that those tornadoes, and Oklahoma has been devastated by that over the years. But one of the things I noticed, and you made the Rupa in terms of the highway system out there, the number of trucks that go up and down those highways is just enormous. Mm -hmm, I mean, you mm -hmm. can stand, I mean, every other vehicle that goes by one of the main highways out there is a huge, you know, two-turn, uh, double-axle truck going up and down those highways, carrying goods from Oklahoma to Texas yes. and to Kansas and Missouri. Right, mm -hmm. right. I want to jump to our next uh, topic so we don't run out of time, and, and that is, we're going to talk about parity, but of course what was in the news this week was the release of this Pew study that said 40% of households that have children, the women is either the breadwinner or the primary breadwinner in the home. Uh, let's just start with you, Rupa. You're the woman in the room. Uh, uh, what was your impression of that? Uh, 
Actually, it's interesting that the thing that really made an impact on me this week was Paul Tudor Jones' comment. How about Wall Street's misogyny? That's my favorite headline of the week, by the way. <laughs> you know, Wall Street's misogyny displayed openly was the U.S. News and World Report headline. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is, this is a pretty much a, a symptom of, of, of what we've got going on. You know, women job parity, women in the workforce. Paul Tudor Jones says, and I quote, um, having children is a killer for focus in the workplace, and men don't have this problem. Really, what happened in 2008 when the mortgage-backed security crisis occurred and we had two banks collapsing? I'm mm. sorry, m the majority <coughs> of Wall Street is men, are men, and w were they focused? When that happens? Well, it's really amazing we're still even having this conversation. And, and, and the truth is, this does bring up the issue of parity. So I'm going to put you on the spot. You have to represent all men. Oh, parity. that's all right. I can uh, deal with know, that. Women still only make, I believe, about 81 cents on the dollar to a, to yes. a man. How, become, how come you guys, you Neanderthal, Neanderthal, uh, Neanderthals, have not progressed in your thinking and understanding the value of the woman and the reality of the difference in our responsibilities? I'll take full blame for that. Go no, ahead. No. No. Spend yourself. No, all right. It's a troglodyte to the rescue. No. But what you're talking about, Rupa, is a situation that is age old. Nothing new here. The Obama, the first measure that he did coming into office was the whole Lily Ledbetter thing. Mm -hmm. you know, so let's improve that situation. Much more can be done, particularly with the MWBE, the kind of minority and women-owned businesses in this country. And I think the state of New York has put together a model that can be replicated across this country and begin to help that whole parity or the disparity of pay between men and women in this country. Let's give them some ownership. You know, beyond just, you know, raising the pay, let's give them ownership where they can begin to control their destinies much better. All right. All right. I want to squeeze in one more. We just, we only have a minute left. Let's Thanks. talk about this baby, this two-day-old baby in China. Mm. You know, we all assumed that this baby was abandoned, that there was a yes. criminal act of foot, foot, only to find out that it was an accident, yeah. uh, but that the mother didn't identify herself at, uh, at mm. first. Isn't that, right. it's almost unthinkable. But one of the things about that, and I, I watched the, the video of that, extracting yeah. the baby out of those tubes, out of those pipes, and then they showed the toilet, and right. therein lies the problem. Mm -hmm. Because it's a hole big enough in which the baby could fall through. And did fall Why don't you right. improve the situation with your whole elimination process there? <laughs> right. That maybe would help a lot in terms of, that baby never would have gone down a, a toilet here in this country. Right. So yeah. let's say something about the toilet system in China. <laughs> this, is, this is a very good point. Exactly. But it also gives rise to the issue, even though it was accidental and we've now learned this, gives rise to the issue that China does have the one-child policy. And, and it also gives rise, gives rise to issues here in this country. We, we see child abandonment happening here in this country as well. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about the fact that a, a pregnant mother who doesn't know what to do ends up not knowing what to do, and so they abandon their child God knows where. And what we have in this country, which is fantastic, is the baby safe haven rules, which means you have within yeah, 24 to 48 difference. hours, right, to deposit your child that you don't want anonymously at a hospital, firehouse, fire station, or police station. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And yeah. in China, that's even more of a problem in ter terms of curbing the number of uh, uh, births that you can have per family, right. whether it's male or female. Sure. Yeah. Was this yeah. baby that went them. down, was, was that male girl. or female? Female, right. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to have to leave it right there. Her mm -hmm. Boyd. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. And Rupa Mikalanini. <laughs> Thank you, guys. You have Thank a great you. weekend. Thank you, Happy dear. Happy Friday mm -hmm. to you. You're watching Arise America.